Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zephora. Thank you for joining me. Over the years, our ministry has been receiving a lot of questions and a lot of emails from people asking about the rabbis uh, when we become believers in Yeshua and Jesus and we understand the biblical Hebrew foundation. Are we supposed to follow the rabbis? Do we take the Talmud at face value? Do we study the Talmud in order to understand the written word of God better? And I'm going to address that today. For those of you who know my background, I was once a Orthodox Jew from a rabbinic family. I grew in a family of rabbis. My grandfather, great-grandfather, ancestors were all rabbis. My great-grandfather was also a Dayan. A Dayan is a judge of a rabbi. It's what you would find today, like in the rabbinical courts here in Israel, or right in the time of Jesus Yeshua, the Sanhedrin. If you think about Judas, who was given 30 pieces of silver to portray Yeshua, Jesus, those are like my family members the Dayans, the judges of the rabbis. When I accepted Yeshua Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life, I realized that this book is the authority, the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. Any other books written by rabbis or commentaries of rabbis are not the authority. I studied to be a Sanhedrin rabbi here in Israel. From the time that I was about two or three years old and I could understand anything, the first thing I was taught was the Talmud, was the Gemara, was the Zohar. What are these books? These are books written by rabbis who don't believe in Yeshua, don't believe in Jesus, and they're interpreting the Word of God. But they interpret the Word of God the way they understand. And I've said this before, and it's very, very important to realize. Number one, we love the Jewish people. We love all people. But we cannot love people over righteousness. The truth has to be preached. Loving the Jewish people and following the Jewish people are two separate things. When we become believers in Yeshua and Jesus, and we understand what it means when the common, being grafted into spiritually Israel, which is Romans eleven seventeen. when we understand what Paul meant, the one new man, Ephesians two fifteen. when we understand the biblical Hebrew foundation of the Bible, that in no way means that we are to start picking up these books such as the Talmud, such as the Gemara, such as the Zohar. These books have a demonic spirit behind them. The demonic spirit doesn't just operate to the nations. The demonic spirit operates everywhere, including to Jews, especially to Jews, because the enemy knows his time is near. The enemy knows that the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how can he stop the Jews from seeing the truth? By having them read books that interpret the Bible and books that interpret the books that interpret the Bible such as the Zohar, such as the Gemara, such as the Talmud. Actually, if you ask a Jew in Israel, that's even not orthodox, not religious, a secular Jew. Do you read the Bible in school? He'll tell you yes. But when you examine the truth, you'll find out that he's reading the Bible through rabbinic interpretations. Radak, Rashi, there are many rabbinic interpretations. And then later on, if he wants more depth of the Bible, then they go to the books like the Talmud and the Zohar. The truth of the matter is, when I studied to be a Orthodox rabbi, I studied the Zohar. I studied the Gemara. I can quote a lot of the Gemara by heart. I know the Gemara. I know the Talmud. But I don't teach the Talmud. I don't teach the Gemara. When I accepted Yeshua, Jesus, as my personal Savior, I took the levit out of the house. What's the house? The house is our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of God. Yeshua lives inside of us. Levit in the Bible represents sin. We are to take the sin out. How can we do that? All of us have fallen short of the glory, but only through him we become righteous. Only through him we become priests. Only through him we become ambassadors. And we need to take the Levit out, and only the Holy Spirit can enable us to do that. When we start studying books like the Talmud, like the Zohar, when we start taking the rabbis who don't believe in Yeshua, in Jesus, at face value, we are allowing demonic spirits not just to enter in our theology, but to enter into our home, into our health, into our ministries, into our life. And there's a danger of doing that. Once again, I know the Talmud. I know the Gemara. I know the Zohar. I've studied these things since I was a boy. But not only do I refuse to teach them, I refuse even to look at them. Because I don't want demonic spirits entering my home, entering my ministry, entering my walk with Jesus, with Yeshua. All through the Bible, Jesus Yeshua rebuked the teachings of the religious leaders who didn't believe in Yeshua, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, 
He addresses in many places. Matthew chapter 15, verse 3 says, Jesus replied, Yeshua, and why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your own tradition? So Jesus, Yeshua, who is God, was teaching not to follow man tradition, but to follow only the word of God. So the question has to be asked, as believers in Yeshua, in Jesus, why do we think we need to follow man tradition? Why do we think we need to learn the Bible through the rabbis? The rabbis lack of something that you and I have, and that is called the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Until anybody, Jew or from the nations, does not have a Damascus Road experience, except Yeshua, Jesus, as their personal Savior, believe that he died on the tree on the cross for our sins. He rose on the third day, and by his blood, we have full redemption of sins. There is no other way to understand the Word of God in context. And Satan and his demons will do everything they can to stop the gospel from going forth. So my reply would be to anybody who is teaching this, don't allow that Jezebel spirit to enter into your congregation, into your house, into your ministry. By anybody teaching these rabbinic interpretations, these rabbinic books, the Talmud, the Zohar, the Midrash, anything besides the Word of God in context, you're allowing that Jezebel spirit to enter into your home, into your congregation. And there is a huge danger by doing that. And the danger is not only will your congregation be led into religion, into tradition, but they slowly, slowly will leave the true word of God and enter into rabbinic Judaism. That is the danger. There is absolutely no difference between studying the Talmud or the Midrash or the Gemara than studying the Quran or studying any other religious book. There is a danger to do that. Would you allow your congregation to teach the Quran? Of course not then why would you allow them to study the Talmud? And again, once again, we love the Jewish people, we love the Orthodox rabbis, but we cannot love people over righteousness. The true gospel needs to be preached. There is also a danger here to Christians around the world who are watching this and listening to this. They say, we don't want that, we don't want that religion. And then they totally leave Biblical Hebrew Foundation alone and go and study the Word of God without understanding the Biblical Hebrew Foundation. And there's also a danger in that. So there has to be balance. Where is the balance, people like to ask? The balance is in the written word of God, from Genesis to Revelation. That is the balance. Jesus said it with his own mouth. No one makes it to the Father, but only through me. But there's a process, and the process is the sanctification process. Right now, as we're getting closer and closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua, we don't set any dates, but we do see, we do know that the season is getting close. There's never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua than this generation. And as we are getting closer to that time, Satan and his demons are going to operate in any way they can to destroy and to take people out of the written word of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, they'll try to do it. And this is what Paul speaks about when Paul addresses, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 says, but if even we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. So we can see that there is a different gospel. If you are teaching the gospel through the Talmud or through rabbinic religion or through man-centered tradition, that is a different gospel. And God says that you're under a curse. So I'm humbled and honored that people email me and ask me. I'm answering the question, not according to speculation, but according to the Word of God says, and the Word of God says, if anybody preaches a different gospel to you, let them be under God's curse. And if you're teaching the Bible through the Talmud or through the Zohar or through rabbinic interpretation, you're not only grieving the Holy Spirit, you're preaching a different gospel, which is dangerous, and you are putting yourself under a curse and those under you under a curse. These are not easy words to preach, but once again, we cannot love people over righteousness. Hebrew is my mother tongue. I could teach Talmud and Gemara verse by verse, but if I do that, I would be preaching a different gospel, and I would be putting other people in danger, being a stumbling block, and that grieves the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. Woe to you, teachers of the law, Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. 
So the question has to be asked, if we are followers of Yeshua, Jesus, why would we close the door for other people? Why would we follow the Pharisees who Jesus, who is God, said not to follow them? That question has to be answered. I think the Bible interprets the Bible. We are to follow only the word, the word of God in context. And the word of God is Yeshua. And when it says over there, law, the word for law is Torah. And the word Torah doesn't mean we follow religion. It doesn't mean we follow Hebraic root teachings of Pharisees. What it means is we follow the word of God in context from Genesis to Revelation. Torah just means God's instruction. Yeshua, Jesus, is the Torah. He is the word. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us in Hebrew. And the Torah became flesh and tabernacled among us. When we study the word of God, it's very important that we keep the whole focus on Jesus, Yeshua, from Genesis to Revelation. Psalms chapter 40, verse 7. Then I said, here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. Some translations say scriptures. In Hebrew, it says Megillah. And Megillah is a word for scroll, and it means that which is hidden shall be revealed. Scroll in Hebrew is revelation. And Yeshua says, the revelation of the Bible is all about me. It is written about me. It's not written about the Pharisees. It's not written about following tradition. It's not written about the Midrash. It's not written about the Talmud. It's not written about the Zohar. It's written about Yeshua. Then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. Zekatuv alai in Hebrew, Megillah. Everything in the Bible is written about me. That's what it means over here, according to the Hebrew. It is written about me. Zekatuv alai Megillah. And we find it in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Then I said, see, it is written about me in the volume of the scroll. I have come to do your will, God. And what did Yeshua say? May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Everything in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation points to Messiah Yeshua, sometimes in a mystery revelation that can only be revealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So once again, why would we want to follow the rabbis? Well, many have said, well, because they know Hebrew better than we know Hebrew. Well, am I saying that it's not good to know Hebrew? It's wonderful to know Hebrew because the original Bible was written in Hebrew. So many people say, yes, but the rabbis, you know, they know the Hebrew and they understand the Bible better. Well, that's not true. Number one, they can't understand the Bible better until they have a Damascus Road experience and accept Yeshua, Jesus, as their personal Savior. Only the Helper, only the Holy Spirit can reveal the truth. It's not a language issue. It's a spiritual issue. Am I saying that it's not good to learn Hebrew? No, it's excellent to learn Hebrew. But if you learn Hebrew without the power of the Holy Spirit, that Hebrew is not going to help you. Our ministry reaches many, many people in Israel, including Satam Sofer. A Satam Sofer is someone that writes a Torah scroll. Now, these people write Torah scrolls for three months, for four months, sometimes six months. They have written Isaiah 53 thousands of times. They have written Psalms 2 thousands of times. They have written Jeremiah 23 thousands of times. They have written Psalms 22 thousands of times. They have written Deuteronomy 18 thousands of times, but they still don't believe in Yeshua. And if you know anything about the way they write these Torah scrolls, these Megillah, which is Megillah, again, a scroll is that which is hidden shall be revealed. So they're actually writing the hidden that shall be revealed. They know Hebrew perfect, but until they don't have the whole the Wach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, they can't understand the Bible like you and I. When Yeshua, Jesus, asked Peter, who do you say I am? And I'm paraphrasing. Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. What did Yeshua answer him? Blessed are you because you know Hebrew. No, that's not what he answered him. He said, blessed are you, O Simon Peter, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you by my Father in heaven, showing us that only the power of the Holy Spirit can reveal the truth. It is not a language issue. It's a spiritual issue. As I said, these Khatam Sofers, which are the ones who write the Torah scrolls. You know how they write the Torah scrolls? I witnessed to many of them here in Israel. My uncle, who was also a rabbi, 
was a Khatam Sofer. He used to write the Torah scrolls for six months, write the whole Torah scroll. They have to write it with a special feather. It's called a quail pen with special kosher ink. And they have to write word by word. So can you imagine him writing Psalms 2? Why do the nations rage and plot against God and his anointing? How many times has he written that? Thousands of times. But yet he still doesn't believe in Messiah Yeshua. Because it is not a language issue, it's a spiritual issue. Now, yes, when he does get revelation that Yeshua is the Messiah, that Hebrew is going to be very, very handy. Without the Holy Spirit, that Hebrew cannot reveal the mysteries. What can reveal the mysteries in the Bible is the power of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus Yeshua, the blood of the Lamb. And Yeshua is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 30, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. It is only the power of the Holy Spirit that can enable us to understand the Word of God. So we are not to follow the rabbis. We are to follow only Jesus Yeshua. And a lot of people say, yeah, but it's very interesting. Even that email that we received, they said it was interesting. Well, if you're looking for interesting things, you can find a lot of interesting things in the world. But it's not the Word of God. And Satan wants to tempt you. How is he going to tempt you? He's going to tempt you with something interesting. He's going to draw your attention to something so you can be fascinated by it. And slowly, slowly, without even realizing, in the name of Jesus, drift away from the written word of God. This book, the Bible, is so rich. There are so many treasures in here. There are so many Megillah, so many that which is hidden shall be revealed that we don't need to look to another book. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, you are the light of the world because he lives inside of us. We're supposed to be a light in this dark world. We're not supposed to be following the darkness in order to understand the light. We're supposed to be sharing the light of the world, Jesus Yeshua, because he lives inside of us through the written word of God in context. And those rabbis, those religious leaders, need to be following us because greater is he in us than the one of the world. But as long as we're following them, not only are we opening the door for demonic spirits to come in, not only are we misleading other brothers and sisters, but we're also keeping the believers that want to understand who Yeshua is, the biblical Hebrew foundation of the Bible, we're keeping them away from the word of God because they see all this religion, they don't want it. So are we supposed to follow the rabbis and their teachings? The answer is no. We're supposed to follow only Jesus, only Yeshua, who is the word. Medach Shlomo, King Solomon, was the wisest of all men. And he writes the conclusion of the matter. Should we study the Talmud? Should we study the Gemara? Should we follow rabbinic tradition? Should we follow man tradition? The answer is no. He gives us the conclusion. Ecclesiastics, chapter 12, verse 13. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. Why is it the duty of all mankind? Because Yeshua created the world in order to dwell with man. Man fell into sin and was separated from God. The only way that man can be reconciled with God is through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Yeshua. So this is why it says it's the duty of all man to follow the Word of God. Who is the Word of God? It's Messiah Yeshua, the sanctification process, to die in Messiah Yeshua daily. And only then can we have eternal life and make it to the kingdom and consummate the marriage forever. This is why the conclusion of the matter is fear God and keep his commandments. And the question I was often asked, is the commandments only the Ten Commandments? Absolutely not. So we have the wisest of all men, Medech Shlomo, King Solomon, giving us the conclusion, and he's writing out of the inspiration of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And now we have God in the flesh talking to us direct. The same thing he told King Solomon, Medech Shlomo, to say in John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, you keep my commandments. And the word for commandments in Hebrew is the word Torah. Is the Torah only the Ten Commandments? Absolutely not. It's the whole word of God from Genesis to Revelation, and that is the same word we just read in Ecclesiastics that King Solomon writes to keep his commandments. 
to keep his Torah. And once again, very, very important. Torah doesn't mean we follow rabbinic tradition. It doesn't mean we follow rabbis. It matters we follow only Jesus, only Yeshua. He is the word. He is the authority. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one makes it to the Father, but only through him. Revelation 14, verse 12. This calls for patience and endurance on the people of God who keep his commandments and remain faithful to Jesus, to Yeshua. So once again, we can see who keep his commandments. And the word for commandments in Hebrew would be like this. This calls for patience and endurance on the people of God who keep his Torah and remain faithful to Jesus, Yeshua. And the word for Torah in Hebrew, once again, it just means God's instructions. It doesn't mean we follow the rabbis. It doesn't mean we follow tradition. We follow only Jesus, Yeshua in context. And he says it over and over again. If you love me, you keep my commandments. He speaks through Melech Shlomo, King Solomon. The duty of all men, and I'm paraphrasing, is to keep his commandments. And he speaks right here in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 12. This calls for patience and endurance on the people of God who keep his commandments and remain faithful to Jesus Yeshua. How do we remain faithful to Jesus Yeshua? By following rabbis? Absolutely not. By following the Talmud? Absolutely not. By quoting rabbis and saying the rabbi said this and the rabbi said that? With all due respect, we love the rabbis, but I don't go around quoting the rabbi said this and the rabbi said that. I say, Jesus said this, Yeshua said this, and Yeshua said that. And that's what it means in the Bible where it says, remain faithful to Yeshua. How do you remain faithful to Yeshua? You're the bride of Yeshua. The bride remains faithful to the groom. She doesn't go off and follow other doctrines and other rabbis and other man-centered traditions especially when Yeshua said in John chapter 13, verse 15, I have set before you the example. He is the example. He is the word. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one makes it to the Father, but only through him. If I wanted to teach rabbinic Judaism, I could. But praise Yeshua, praise Jesus. I now have the truth. I have Yeshua HaMashiach. Why would I ever want to go back to the Talmud why would I ever take the rabbis at face value? And why would I ever teach rabbinic Judaism in the name of Jesus and grieve the Holy Spirit? If you love Yeshua, you keep his word, his Torah, his word, not the rabbi's words. And the truth of the matter is, if we teach what the rabbis teach and go to these dangerous books, I call them dangerous books because they lead people astray. Many people don't know this. The Talmud actually rebukes Yeshua and teaches against Yeshua. And then we have believers taking the Talmud and studying what the rabbi says. Can you imagine if uh, there was a book that was called, and there, there probably are books out there that are called The Teachings of Satan. I know that there's a church of Satan. I don't know what books they teach, and I'm not interested to know. I study only the Word of God. But if there's a book out there that says The Teachings of Satan or The Book of Satan, and, you, and somebody would take that and teach that in their congregation in order to teach Jesus. Would that make sense? It's the same thing if you take a Talmud or any other religious book and you try to apply Jesus to it or try to justify it, you're allowing a demonic spirit to come in. Now, some have told me that I'm the only Messianic rabbi in the world that says this. I don't know if I am. Praise God, the Holy Spirit reveals to me the truth. One thing is certain. I am not going to go back to Judaism and teach that in the name of Yeshua and grieve the Holy Spirit. One thing I've learned over the years, the more I study this book, the more I realize how much I don't know. There's so much richness in this book, in this Bible, that we can never learn enough. Why would we ever go to another book when Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and told us not to do that? In conclusion, we are not to follow the rabbis. We are to follow only Jesus, only Yeshua in context. We are not to preach a different gospel. What's a different gospel? Anything that uses the name of Yeshua and teaches false doctrine is a different gospel. Am I saying that we know everything? Absolutely not. Only Jesus, only Yeshua knows everything. Am I saying that we don't make mistakes? No, we all make mistakes. But there's a difference between making a mistake while you're in the Word of God and correcting it and making a mistake 
when you're studying something outside of the Word of God, that is not a mistake. That's an act of rebellion against the Word of God. The pattern has to be correct, and the pattern is the Word of God. If I'm repeating myself over and over in this video, it's to make a point. Please don't follow the rabbis. Please don't study the Talmud or any other rabbinic books. Study only the written Word of God. Love the Jewish people. Love the people in the nations. Preach the truth. But loving the Jewish people doesn't mean we follow them. Thank you for joining me, and may Yeshua greatly bless you. We will continue to preach the gospel of Yeshua no matter what. Until all Israel shall be saved, Romans eleven twenty six, And until that time, for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And we know that the word for salvation in Hebrew is Jesus, Yeshua. Her Yeshua like a blazing torch. We live in a fallen world, but greater is he in us than the one of the world. And he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah, Revelation 5.5, 5, with fire in his eyes like a blazing torch to take back everything the enemy has stolen. And until that time, it's important that we be ambassadors for the kingdom, that we walk as priests in the spiritual realm, preach the true gospel, bring the gospel back to Jerusalem, and go home. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zeph Porat, sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Yeshua. Amen.